A crash this morning, but San Antonio police say it didn't start that way. The details from their investigation and an update on the injuries coming up. They figure a way to just to pop it because I know for a fact they had a quarter tank of gas and next morning it was empty. And with gas being a hot commodity right now, thieves are doing what they best do. That's stealing expensive gas straight out of people's cars. How officials say you can protect your tank in your morning headlines. Set your mind with what you want to do and do it. And that's what she did. Without the persistence of Miss Seeley, a well-known beer company here in South Texas wouldn't exist today. We'll share how she saved Shiner Beer and give you a behind the scenes look at how KSAT created this story. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Yeah, let's start by taking a look at these numbers behind us. Look up there, Bernie. These are the temperatures here in South Texas as this cold front comes through. Bernie's 36, Stinson 53 degrees. We're going to check in with Katie Blake here in just a second and get an update on this cold front. The wind is howling. It's a little chilly out there, but first, we're going to start with gas prices jumping again overnight. We are now at an all time high right here in Bear County. AAA, GasBuddy.com, both reporting the average price of gas, $3.98, inching close to that $4 mark. The state average is just above $4, but the nation is well above that mark, $4.30. Some prices on the West Coast nearing $7 per gallon, my goodness. So where can you find the lowest prices here in San Antonio, and are there ways to save money? We have those answers right now on KSAT.com. Just find the story under the news section. All right, let's take a look outside. 46 degrees already. 8.59 a.m. and it's just going to get colder. It has been a strange morning because it was in the 60s <laughs> this morning. Yeah, it was warmer. Left my house and I outran the cold front. That's it was in the 40s when I left this morning <laughs> and I got here and it was in the 60s. <laughs> I and love pockets of rain. I love cold fronts. Yes, we do have a little bit of rain out there. We've got a little bit more time to pick up a little bit of light rain from these showers. But the big story today, of course, the temperatures that have already fallen a lot and the wind that will be kicking in shortly. Quick look at Doppler radar does show a few showers, one right in the heart of San Antonio there, um, just to the west of downtown. Also a little shower north of Castroville. As we zoom out a bit more, most of the activity now is south of Highway 90 from Pearsall over to Atascosa. County and Pleasanton over into Carnes County. So the front itself, you can almost draw it right where that line of rain is from Pearsall over to Carnes City. And as the front continues to move south this morning, those showers will go with it. But nonetheless, a little bit of light rain will be possible for a couple more hours. Check out the temperatures 35 in Kerrville, 36 Bernie Stage. 46 at the airport in San Antonio, 61 in Pleasanton front. Looks like it just moved through uh, your area there, Pleasanton. You have a north wind at about 10 miles per hour, but look at everyone else's winds already up between 15 and 25 miles per hour. We have got a cold and blustery day ahead. Now that temperatures are in the 40s, that's where we stay for the rest of the day. 30s for the hill country even through the afternoon. Morning showers will give way to some clearing late this afternoon. That sets us up for the widespread freeze overnight. Everyone needs to prep for a freeze tonight through Saturday morning. We've got a lot to talk about in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. David Alicia. Thank you, Katie. Here's today's nine at nine. President Joe Biden will announce this morning new restrictions on Russia. The announcement will come in the presence of the European Union and G7 allies. And sources say Biden will revoke Russia's permanent normal trade relations, which would allow new tariffs on Russian imports. That meeting is scheduled to begin at 9.15. Vice President Kamala Harris and the president of Romania will meet this morning to discuss growing concerns about the influx of refugees fleeing Ukraine. It's a problem the Biden administration warns could worsen in the days ahead. A district judge will hold a hearing today on whether to grant an injunction barring the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services from following Governor Greg Abbott's directive to treat gender affirming care for minors as child abuse. The district judge put a temporary restraining order on a case for a family helping their transgender daughter access medical care. And if an injunction is granted, that case and similar ones would be blocked completely. 
The Senate passed a massive government funding bill Thursday evening, a measure that includes $13.6 billion in aid to Ukraine. It now heads to the president's desk for his signature. Meanwhile, government funding is set to expire today, and lawmakers have been racing the clock to prevent a shutdown. A potential bomb cyclone storm could batter portions of central and eastern U.S. today. Severe thunderstorms are expected for parts of the southeast as a strong cold front pushes across much of the country. Blizzard-like conditions are expected for some parts of the northern U.S. Spring training sites in Florida and Arizona are now open to MLB players. It comes the day after the MLB's lockout ended with a new proposed five-year collective bargaining agreement. It's been 99 days since the lockout began. Opening day pushed back to April 7th, and the first week of games will be rescheduled as doubleheaders, but 162 games will be played in Major League Baseball this season. With gas prices at an all-time high in America, AAA says drivers plan to change their driving habits. A new survey by AAA reveals over 80% of drivers say they will drive less to save gas. A third of adults over 35 are interested in carpooling, and over half say they will cut back on eating out and shopping to save money. Prices kept rising in the U.S. in February, pushing a key inflation measure to its highest level in 40 years. Gas, food, and housing prices, which are necessary rather than discretionary spending, drove the February price increases. Gas prices alone contributed nearly a third of the overall inflation increase. A newly discovered rainbow fish lives in what scientists call the ocean's twilight zone. Scientists say the colorful species can be found living anywhere from 131 to 229 feet below the ocean's surface. And that's today's 9 at 9. And by the way, we just got this note that President Biden is going to be addressing the nation here within the next hour or so. When he starts talking, we will obviously bring that to you. But from what we understand, it's going to be about more sanctions against Russia. So when the president steps to the podium, we will have that for you. But in the meantime, let's still with some, stick with some top story here in San Antonio. We're following a story about smashed cars, broken bones, the results of a major crash overnight. It involved four cars and it shut down a busy highway flyover. We're talking about the ramp from Interstate 10, so I-10 and Loop 410. Here's a look at the scene earlier this morning. Based on what officers told us, it doesn't appear there were any major injuries. However, they say one of the drivers in the initial crash did suffer some broken bones. Police say first off, it was two cars that collided on I-10 and Loop 410. Then a third car came along and crashed into those two cars. As officers were working to clear all that up, a fourth car plowed into that crash scene. Right now, no word on if any charges are pending. The road has since been reopened, though. And new this morning, we've learned the name of the man killed in a West Side fire Wednesday night. The medical examiner's office has identified the victim as 69-year-old Jesse Phillips Jr. The fire happened on Grove Hill Street, not far from Calabria Road and Benris. Arson investigators say they haven't found anything suspicious just yet, but they're still trying to figure out exactly what did spark that fire. And a man killed in a crash early yesterday morning has been identified as 29-year-old Arturo Sita. It happened around 2.30 yesterday near Farm Road 78 and Lakeview Drive. That's close to Ritterman and North Foster Roads. Police say Sita was driving on the wrong side of the road when he crashed into another vehicle. That the, there was a woman in that vehicle. She was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay. In your morning headlines, more worries for drivers filling up, not with gas prices, but gas thieves. Plus, dash cam video shows a Florida trooper putting her life on the line. And a dramatic scene in Chicago, in a Chicago courtroom, after a high-profile trial involving a very popular actor. RJ Marquez is live with us in the studio with these stories and much more. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, good Friday morning. Hopefully everyone's having a good Friday out there. You guys mentioned those prices out in California, close to $7, mm -hmm. I think is what I heard. Insane. Yeah, it is crazy right now. And that's exactly where we're going to start this morning because that's really the top of mind for a lot of people out there who have to hit the road for work or school. And in Southern California, a neighborhood there, there are now worries about thieves siphoning gas right out of cars. People living in Pasadena say there's been a rash of gas thefts because of those sky high prices in that area. One man said that someone stole gas right out of his minivan during the overnight hours and a woman said that gas was stolen right out of her car during her lunch break. I was dropping off groceries to a family to a, a family member and um, when I returned to my car 
I turned it on and that's when I got the alert that I had low fuel. Just for gas to be taken out like that, then it's just it's just heartbreaking. What the heck am I gonna do now? More security, you know, more stuff to make sure that people start messing around. It's just more stress. Gas can only holds a couple of gallons, you know, uh, two or three gallons. So it may not be even something you even notice, you know, when you get into your car. You just look down and you're like, oh, okay, well, I need to get gas. So you don't pay attention. But, uh, you know, be vigilant and, and try to keep aware of where you're at. You may not even know you're a victim. All right, some tips there on just how to maybe uh, be safe out there and make sure that thieves don't get to your gas tank. So police there in Pasadena say the department has not seen a sharp increase in any of these thefts, but that does not obviously mean that it is not happening. They also say that many modern tanks are fitted with special anti-siphoning devices, but thieves are finding ways around that as well. OK, now to the latest on actor Juicy Smollett. He was sentenced to jail yesterday, but did not want to go away quietly. He let the judge know his thoughts as he was taken out of the Chicago courtroom. I am not suicide. I am innocent. All right, you hear there right there, Jesse Smollett and a judge sentencing him to about five months in jail after his conviction for disorderly conduct and making false reports to police. You can see he was very uh, emotional there about that sentencing. Smollett said he was attacked and was the victim of a hate crime in 2019. But before his sentencing, the judge directly addressed Smollett saying that what he did was shameful. The judge also said the actor lied on the stand during his trial and never apologized for his actions. But Smollett's brother said that he actually is the victim and was treated unfairly. He's in jail for five months. That is unacceptable for being attacked. It is not, it is not his fault that folks are not going to believe survivors anymore. He is a survivor and he has been completely mistreated and this, is, this has to stop. All right, a lot of emotions there in that courtroom yesterday. Smollett was also ordered to pay the city of Chicago $120,000 in restitution and a $25,000 fine. Okay, guys, just into the newsroom this morning, and uh, you may have gotten an alert on our KSAT News app about this. The oldest sister of Willie Nelson has passed away. That is Bobby Nelson. She died last night at the age of 91. The Nelson family says she passed away peacefully in her sleep. The cause and location of where she died has not been released yet, but Bobby Nelson was a longtime pianist in Willie Nelson's band. She was born out there in Abbott, Texas, and played at Honky Tonks alongside Willie in their early days. Some great music there. Tributes pouring in are social media this morning and our respect to the great Bobby Nelson there dead at the age of 91. Okay guys and now to this amazing story out of Florida where a trooper is speaking out this morning about an accident she was involved in where she had to stop an out of control driver from possibly hitting these drive these runners behind me and she did it by letting that driver smash into her patrol car. So check this out. So on Sunday morning, a driver broke through barricades for this 10 K race and trooper Tony Shuck noticed it from about a mile away. That's her dash cam video that we're looking at. She ended up kind of positioning her car in the middle of the road, blocking the path. And she thought that if that driver saw her, maybe they would stop, but they in fact did not instead boom, colliding nearly head on with that trooper. It's hard because I've done this for 26 years and I've never been in this position. I've never been in this position where I've had to put myself for somebody else. I feel that <clears throat> what I did, I had to do. I didn't want to do, but I had to do it. Yeah, heroic effort there. Both vehicles were mangled, as you could see, after that wreck, and the driver was arrested, and sheriffs determined that that driver was, in fact, impaired. Shuck is recovering. You saw a couple of scratches there on her face after suffering some minor injuries. But again, uh, her instinct taking over here, guys, and just, uh, I mean, I can't even imagine yeah. being in that situation, that moment where you literally see this car flying right at you. I mean, I just can't imagine the, what you're thinking. And it's powerful for her to say that this isn't something that she mm -hmm. wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She obviously that just the dangers of it all. Yeah. And she still did.
basically let her instincts kind of take over and the adrenaline in the moment. Mm -hmm. A hero in the true sense of the word. Absolutely. Back to the gas thieves. I heard oh. this morning, hopefully I'm not giving anybody any, any hints here, but I heard this morning on the radio, so it's already, it's already yeah. out there, that some of these thieves are actually drilling holes in the bottom of gas tanks Man. and letting it leak out. So yeah. you could go back and you know get your gas cans and start filling up your car and all of a sudden it's just all over the ground. So these, these guys are yeah. getting... Always finding different ways to do yeah. this and hopefully so. people just stay vigilant out there because we know Attention. gas prices have been yeah. Yeah, a real worry for so, us. Hopefully gas prices people. will go down and they'll find something else. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, RJ. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's 913. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Imagine how many brands would be around if the Craters family kept the legacy going. That's exactly why one well-known beer company is still open today. We'll introduce you to the woman who saved Shiner Beer in our next half hour. And we're just talking about high gas prices. People who make a living by driving are now considering doing something else. And the reason? Those gas prices. We'll show you what some are considering as alternatives coming up. Everywhere and police conducting their investigation. They did have to shut down this area of the... <laughs> That's a blooper. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. What the heck? What the heck? Oh, she knew right away. It was a blooper. Proof yeah. that the wind mm. is yes. wild. This front changed things really quickly, and I like what Katrina said, what the heck. She said what the heck because she had to catch a light from falling on her face, right? <laughs> but um, if you had to say what the heck this morning with the cold front, um, maybe you need to get that Case Out Weather app on your phone because we've been talking about this one for a week. Little sass for you this morning. There you go. There the sass. <laughs> I just want okay. you to know. Speaking I of also the... appreciate the Twitter updates. Look at there. Looky there. Looky there. <laughs> it's the weather team right there. It's all Thank you, David. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you for your support. It's cloudy and 47, by the way. Yes, it is already cold out there. Um, the wind, without a doubt, just makes my eyes water like crazy. That's what we've already got happening. Whoa. They also have something to do with the six allergens in the air today. Thankfully, everything is low. Speaking of the KSAT weather app, I will be sending this to the KSAT weather app here very shortly. Current conditions at the airport, we've got a little bit of water here on the lens. There's still some lingering light shower activity out there. This is not going to last very longer and it's so light that it's not going to add up to much. Unfortunately, 46 at the airport through about seven o'clock this morning. We were holding steady at 60, so it is already much colder out there. That's for sure. Here's a look at radar. We happen to catch this little teeny tiny shower right over the airport on our camera. So that's the moisture that you're seeing there on the camera lens. Otherwise, not much rain to see. There is a decent batch of some light shower activity from Pearsall, essentially south of Charlotte, uh, east of Pleasanton, over into a portion of Carnes County there. This is just some light to briefly moderate rain, and it's draped along the frontal boundary. As the frontal boundary continues to drop south, it's going to take the rain with it. So if you're getting a little bit of light rain right now, it won't last much longer. Our rain chances for everyone come to an end and uh, by midday today. Temperature spread across the area, 33 in Fredericksburg. Meanwhile, 61 in Pleasanton. The front is through Pleasanton, so you, those of you in Atascosa County, your temperature is dropping as we speak. A bit farther out ahead of the front, 65 in Catula and still 70 in Laredo. So this cold front means business. Let me take you through temperatures today. So through the rest of the morning, through lunchtime, as this front continues to drop south, Everyone in the KSAP viewing area as far south as Catula, even over to Beeville, will see temperatures fall into the 40s. Hill Country, you'll be as cold as the 30s through lunchtime, and that will be about where we stay through the afternoon. Temperatures may rebound a little bit places like Del Rio, Spofford, even Uvalde and Carrizo Springs, because we will start to see some clearing out to the west later on this afternoon. Uh, but temperatures really won't be moving very much today once the front comes through your area. So bottom line, staying cold, also staying windy. Here is that clearing line by four o'clock this afternoon. Again, it'll be starting to work through some of our westernmost counties, and I think we'll get to see a little bit of sun late this afternoon, early this evening in San Antonio, but it won't be for long enough that it will really have a big effect on our temperatures. Skies continue to clear out completely overnight. 
by early tomorrow morning. Our skies are clear. Our wind speeds will start to drop off. Air is going to be bone dry. All of that with the cold air mass that's moving in sets us up for a widespread freeze tonight. Everyone in the KSAT viewing area should plan for temperatures to fall below freezing tonight with a hard freeze in some areas, especially the hill country and then down along the southern Edwards Plateau, potentially even down to Highway 90 uh, closer to Uvalde there. So a hard freeze possible for a portion of the area tonight, but everyone will drop below freezing. You'll need to make that freeze prep. Uh, the biggest thing here will be any sensitive vegetation that maybe has already been planted that will need to be covered and protected tonight and then again tomorrow night as well. Remember to bring in those pets too. All right, look at today. We talked temperatures, it's cold. That's how things will stay. Mention the clearing later on this afternoon. Let's touch on the wind because our, we're going to start to see our wind speeds pick up here very shortly and it is going to be gusty through the afternoon, through the evening. We'll see peak wind gusts later on today, 40 to 45 miles per hour. And those numbers could hold through tonight with wind speeds eventually dropping off overnight through dawn to tomorrow and again that plays a part in our widespread freeze tonight through early tomorrow morning. A look ahead to your weekend. A lot of sunshine here. It'll be a bit cool tomorrow. Another freeze tomorrow night into Sunday morning back closer to 70 by Sunday and next week will be much more seasonable with highs in the 70s and the 80s. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 925 this Friday morning and with gas prices at an all time high, everyone is feeling the pinch, but especially drivers who work for apps like DoorDash, Lyft and Uber. The increase in gas prices is cutting into their profits, as you could imagine. Patty Santos talks to drivers who are thinking about quitting. The Honda would take me exactly twenty five dollars to fill up um, to go 400 miles. Now, it only gets me about half a tank. Driving for rideshare companies and food delivery apps has paid the bills and family extras for five years for Joseph Clappinger. Gas and mileage receipts are tracking the drastic jump in prices. With prices averaging $3.75, he says it's not even worth getting out of the driveway. I tried looking at last weekend going, just turned on my app, and I sat in one area for about, say about 45 minutes because I had some free time, didn't get one hit. People are going out less, taking the bus more, and cutting back on food deliveries. Those are luxuries, and those are luxuries, unfortunately, people are cutting back on because they're having to cut costs. I pay my own gas out of my own pocket. Greg Weber, delivery driver for Poppy's Pizza, is grateful some customers are a bit more generous with their tips. To work, you have to have gas. If you don't have gas, you can't work. At $5 per delivery, his boss says that might have to change soon. What scares me now, if, if gas stays like this, they're going to use that as, a, as an excuse to take everything else up because they're going to say it, it, you know, it costs that much to more to put it on the truck and get it here. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Tough times. 927, 44 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, Russia's invasion of Ukraine threatening the International Space Station. We'll talk with a well-decorated NASA astronaut about the potential consequences happening in space. And a well-known beer here in South Texas would not be around anymore if it weren't for one woman holding on to the legacy. Her story next and a live interview with the photojournalist behind the idea of this story and a look at what went into putting the story together. And as we head to break, a quick check of the roads. This is Highway 90 at, I missed that loop, I-37 in Pecan Valley. Things are looking smooth. And welcome back. It is 930. The famous Texas beer, Shiner Beer, made at the Stitzel Brewery in Shiner, Texas, almost ceased to exist back in the 1920s if it hadn't been for one woman. So Miss Seeley, the daughter of Cosmos Spetzel, he's the creator of Shiner Beer, didn't just keep the iconic Texas brewery alive, but also owned and ran it in the 1950s and 60s. Okay, I believe we're going to have that special report from President Biden. We're going to join him right now, then we'll get back to this in just a few minutes. So here's President Biden. He's trying to further increase the economic pressure on Vladimir Putin, including suspending normal trade relations between the U.S. and Russia. Stripping Russia of its most favored nation status would allow the U.S. to impose tariffs on a wide range of Russian goods, further crippling the Russian economy. And the address comes as President Biden is set to sign a $1.5 trillion spending bill cleared by Congress overnight. 
And here's the president. Let's listen. I've just spoken for some time with President Zelensky of Ukraine. I told him, as I have each and every time we've spoken, the United States stands with the people of Ukraine and they're bravely, as they bravely fight to defend their country. And they are doing that. And as Putin continues his merciless assault, the United States and our allies and partners continue to work in lockstep to ramp up the economic pressures on Putin and to further isolate Russia and the global stage. Later today, together with other NATO allies in the G7, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, as well as the European Union, we're going to jointly announce several new steps to squeeze Putin and hold him more, even more accountable for his aggression against Ukraine. And I want to speak to a few of those points today. First, each of our nations is going to take steps to deny most favored nation status to Russia. A most favored nation status designation means two countries have agreed to trade with each other under the best possible terms. Low tariffs, few barriers of trade, and the highest possible imports allowed. In the United States, we call this permanent normal trade relations, PNTR, but it's the same thing. Revoking PNTR for Russia is going to make it harder for Russia to do business with the United States and doing it in unison with other nations that make up half of the global economy will be another crushing blow to the Russian economy. It's already suffering very badly from our sanctions. And I want to thank Speaker Pelosi, Leader McCarthy, Leader Schumer and McConnell and Senators Wyden and Crapo, Representatives Neal and Brady for their bipartisan leadership on this in the Congress. I would like to offer a special thanks to Speaker Pelosi, who's been a strong advocate for, for revoking PNTR and who agreed to hold off on that in the House until I could line up all of our key allies to keep us in complete unison. Unity among our allies is critically important, as you all know, from, and from my perspective, at least. Many issues divide us in Washington, but standing for democracy in Ukraine, pushing Russia's aggression should not be one of those issues. The free world is coming together to confront Putin. Our two parties here at home are leading the way. And with that bipartisan cooperation, I'm looking forward to signing into law the bill revoking PNTR, which is, again, most people think of it as most favored nation status. We're also taking a further step of banning imports of goods from several signature sectors of the Russian economy, including seafoods, vodka, and diamonds. And we're going to continue to squeeze Putin the G7 will seek to deny Russia the ability to borrow from leading multinational institutions, such as the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Putin is an aggressor. He is the aggressor. And Putin must pay the price. He cannot pursue a war that threatens the very foundations, which he's doing, the very foundations of international peace and stability, and then ask for financial help from the international community. The G7 is also stepping up pressure on corrupt Russian billionaires. We're adding new names to the list of oligarchs and their families that we're targeting. And we're increasing coordination among the G7 countries to target and capture their ill-begotten gains. They support Putin. They steal from the Russian people. And they seek to hide their money in our countries. They're part of a, that kleptocracy that exists in Moscow. And they must share in the pain of these sanctions. And while we're going after these uh, su their super yachts and their vacation homes and worth hundreds of mil millions of dollars, we're also going to make it harder for them to buy high-end products manufactured in our country. We're banning the export of luxury, luxury goods to Russia. They're also the latest steps we're taking, but uh, they're not the last steps we're going to take. And as I said, at the beginning of all these steps, we're going to hit Putin harder because the United States and our closest allies and partners are acting in unison. The totality of our sanctions and export controls is crushing the Russian economy. The ruble has lost more than half its value. They tell me it takes about 200 rubles to equal one dollar these days. Moscow stock exchange has been closed for fully for two weeks because they know the moment it opens, it will probably collapse. Credit rating agencies has downgraded Russia's government to junk status, its economy to junk status. The list of businesses, international corporations leaving Russia is growing by the day. We're also continuing to close uh, corporations with allies and partners to make sure that 
as close cooperation we continue to have, the Ukrainian people are, are able to defend their own nation. The United States has sent more than $1 billion in security assistance to Ukraine over the last year, including anti-armor and anti-air capabilities, taking out tanks and planes and helicopters, with new shipments arriving every day. We, the United States, are also facilitating significant shipments of security assistance from our allies and partners to Ukraine. And the humanitarian front, we're working closely with the UN and humanitarian organizations to support the people of Ukraine who've been displaced by the violence in Ukraine. We're providing, we're providing tens of thousands of tons of human supplies, or, or excuse me, humanitarian supplies, food, water, medicines, coming via truck and train every single day. Yesterday in Poland, Vice President Harris, Harris announced an additional $53 million in additional humanitarian support to Ukraine. That brings the total humanitarian assistance to $107 million in just two weeks. We've joined this effort by more, with more than 30 other countries who are providing hundreds of millions more. And last night, to the great credit, the Congress passed a bipartisan spending bill that included an additional $13.6 billion in new assistance to the Ukrainian people. And I look forward to signing that immediately. And I also want to be clear, though. We will make sure Ukraine has weapons to defend against an invading Russian force. We will. We will send money and food and aid to save the Ukrainian people. And I will welcome Ukrainian refugees. We should welcome them here with open arms if they need access. And we're going to provide more support for Ukraine. We're going to continue to stand together with our allies in Europe and send unmistakable message. We'll defend every single inch of NATO territory with the full might of the united and galvanized NATO. We will not fight a war against Russia in Ukraine. The direct confrontation between NATO and Russia is World War III, something we must strive to prevent. But we already know Putin's war against Ukraine will never be a victory. He hoped to dominate Ukraine without a fight. He failed. He hoped to fracture European resolve. He failed. He hoped to weaken the transatlantic alliance. He failed. He hoped to split apart American democracies in terms of our positions. He failed. The American people are united. The world is united. And we stand with the people of Ukraine. We will not let autocrats and would-be emperors dictate the direction of the world. Democracies are rising to meet this moment, rallying the world to the side of peace and the side of security. We're showing our strength, and we will not falter. God bless all of you. God bless Ukraine, and God bless our troops. Uh, your White House has said that, that Are we going to stick with some questions from uh, to the president? Yeah, I think we should. Uh, let's listen in for a few minutes. Military response if Putin does launch a chemical weapons attack. I'm not going to speak about the intelligence, but you, but uh, Russia would pay a severe price if they use chemical weapons. Was the president expanding the federal gas tax? All right, that was President Joe Biden. All right, that was uh, President Joe Biden speaking there, and you kind of got the sense that that was a question about. Uh, about biological weapons being used by Russia against Ukrainians, and he said he wasn't going to speak about that. So that's how we kind of wrapped up that uh, that announcement to uh, to the U.S. A lot of things that he had in that. We've got all that for you on our website, kset.com, and of course we'll have a wrap up on kset12 news. At Before noon. we go with Katie, uh, perhaps one of the biggest things to note there is that President Biden has said no direct confrontation with Russia because he says that would start World War III. Katie, we'll take it to you to the live cam. Let's take a look outside right now. 43 degrees, already super chilly. It is much colder today. Yesterday was an awesome day, sunny and uh, seasonable, but warm with highs in the 70s. <laughs> We're going the other direction today. Uh, if you haven't left the house already, you've got some errands to run later on. You will want a jacket. You will want a coat. It is cold out there. Not only have temperatures fallen, we're going to have very gusty winds all day today. 31. Lost Maples up in the hill country already 46 in Seguin and 55 in Pleasanton. So if you were with us at the top of the show 
earlier. Pleasanton was in the low 60s. Now they're already down in the mid 50s. So temperatures are falling as we speak across a portion of the KSAP viewing area. Here's a look at your sustained winds currently. Um, they're anywhere from about 15 to 25 miles per hour. And once wind speeds pick up where you live, they are going to stay elevated for the rest of the day. We have had some light shower activity around today that is starting to fizzle out. It was focused along the frontal boundary. Now as that front continues to drop south, it will take the shower activity with it. Nonetheless, for another hour or two, can't rule out a little shower here or there. Otherwise, things stay cold. Our temperatures will be in the 40s for the rest of the day, even starting to drop into the upper 30s by this evening. Clearing starts late this afternoon, early this evening. It's clear skies overnight and light winds eventually late tonight through tomorrow morning that set us up for a widespread late season freeze. I'll show you your forecast morning low temperatures for Saturday coming up in just a little bit. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So on KSAT.com, we have a wonderful story about the history of a Shiner beer and the woman behind it. Photojournalist Asian Bermea, he's here with us now. He's the man behind that camera. You went with Sarah Acosta for this story. So how did this idea even come about? Uh, well, earlier last year, or late last year in October, I went with Max. We just went to go. I'd never been. And they were giving us a tour. And she had mentioned how she had saved the brewery. And I was like, oh, that's a good story. I know exactly when I want to do that story in March for Women's History Women's Month. Women's History Month. So I told Sarah and we went out again. Obviously the story's out there, but give us some uh, behind the scenes stuff that may not be in that story. How did you uh, approach her? How did, how did y'all end up uh, putting this whole story together? Well, again, like I said, you, I, I knew the month that it was going to be in. Mm -hmm. So when I told Sarah, we need to get out there. We want to go see what she really did. And they told us, her dad was ready to just sell it. He was gone through prohibition. His wife had just passed. You know, he went back to Germany to go get her, the daughter, to have her help him sell it. When she got here, she fell in love with it and was like, "You can't sell this. It, it's not. It's not what. Like you've got to keep going." So he did, and she persuaded him. And then in 1950, he had passed uh, Cosmos and she took over. And in that time, it was rare to even see a woman, you know, being on the flagship of a brewery. And what is it like seeing just the process of, you know, the bottling, packaging, all that? Um, I mean, back then, I don't know, but today it's rapid. Like they are shipping out all around the world now to uh, military bases around the world, all across the US, all 50 states. I know like when I went to Hawaii this past summer, I saw a Shiner bottle and I, Got a little excited. Yeah, you get excited when you see that. <laughs> it's it's all over. Um, so my question is, how did you manage to go through this whole story without the taste test? Because Sarah did. Because Sarah did. Yeah, did you? <clears throat> I didn't. <laughs> wow. Fair enough. You, I you mean, got why guts you admitting that anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, how long that's is this good. tour? Oh, man, the tour, I don't, it was like maybe an hour. OK, so a good yeah. family outing. Yeah. yeah. Kind of not too and it's, far. It's, it's, it's not far. It's conveniently close. And lots to do for the family, like just lots of running room. Uh, they have cornhole, they have Jenga. You know. So it's a family event, the, it, the tour I of I mean, it can be, yeah, it's brewery. educational. It really is educational to, to see the growth that Shiner has done. I think she said they had a, uh, maybe a 60 mile radius when they first started yeah. of what they're selling. And they've expanded so much, the growth in Shiner. Of course, you know, everyone knows Shiner. It's true to Texas, I guess. Yeah. So. That's a, a great story. All right. Awesome. Photojournalist AZ and Bermeo, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. All right, Katie, is it a good time for a tour of the Shiner Ooh, Brewery? I would not today. But you know what? Even by this weekend, especially in the afternoons, it's not going to be as cold as it will be today. We will get some sun tomorrow morning, and that'll start to warm us up. So this weekend, especially by Sunday, won't be too bad out there at all. Here's your pollen count if you missed it last half hour. Just sent this to the KSAT Weather Authority app. Six allergens today. Everything is low. Texas getting very cold here. Uh, down in Brownsville, they're still in the low 70s, even mid 60s in Corpus. But uh, it's about to get cold all across the Lone Star State, below freezing from San Angelo all the way up into the Panhandle. This is a strong uh, uh, late season cold front for us here, and this sets us up for a late season widespread freeze tonight. 
tonight. So tonight is the night that everyone needs to prep for a freeze, especially when it comes to plants and sensitive vegetation. We've got temperatures falling below freezing everywhere from the hill country all the way down to Carrizo Springs, Catula, even closer to the coastal bend, places like Beeville and Goliad. Parts of the area could see a hard freeze. That's 28 or below for uh, four or more hours. In fact, parts of the hill country and southern Edwards Plateau could be below freezing for up to 12 hours. And it is here that it will be more important to take some freeze prep in terms of uh, insulating any exposed pipes on your home. This is especially for folks that live out in the country or in more rural areas. Again, hill country, southern Edwards Plateau, you'll be below freezing for the longest. So this part of the freeze prep will be most important for you. Everyone, though, should, of course, check on those without central heating, especially overnight through tomorrow morning. Cover or bring in sensitive vegetation and make sure we bring our furry friends indoors tonight when it gets very cold out there. Now, a freeze this time of year for the hill country, that's you know, not odd. The average last freeze date for the hill country is mid to late March. For everyone else, this is a late freeze, but we have had a freeze in San Antonio as late as early April. So we've got some cold mornings this weekend, a freeze tomorrow morning, a freeze Sunday morning. But look at our afternoons close to 70 by Sunday. And then next week, our mornings and our afternoons will be much more seasonable. We'll get our highs back into the 70s and 80s. So if you were out early this morning, you may have run into a little bit of rain. We did have some shower activity out there. As the front was moving through, things are starting to wind down as far as any rain goes. A couple of showers south of Highway 90. But as this frontal boundary continues to drop south this morning, that will take any chance of some lingering showers with it. But through about 10, 11 a.m., maybe a little shower or a sprinkle here or there. Our temperatures are in the 40s. That's where they stay for the rest of the day. By this evening, we'll start to drop into the 30s as skies clear out. It's that clearing that plays a part in um, our freeze early tomorrow morning. Uh, speaking of winds, it will stay windy all day tonight. Winds will start to let up overnight. Light winds on Saturday, little breezy on Sunday. And then next week, as I mentioned, back to the 70s and the 80s. We'll be right back. Hey guys, coming up on live, Ali Sheedy from Single Drunk Female. Plus, we make chili con carne with Darnell Ferguson. Coming up on live. Check out with traffic. You know, it's still going to be weird today because it's Friday again. And a lot of people are off on spring break now. And people are coming back from spring break. So this weekend will be a weird driving weekend. People coming, people going. But it looks weird good and now. cold. And cold. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, after a little bit of rain early this morning, showers are clearing out. Now we're just left with the cold and the wind for the rest of the day. Widespread freeze tonight and another freeze possible tomorrow night. Better next week, guys. Sunnier days ahead. Yes. Thank you, Katie. Spurs looking for a sunny night tonight. They are taking on the Utah Jazz. That homestand continues. A win tonight makes Pop the winningest coach in NBA history. A lot is on the line tonight. So lots on the line. Plus, they need a win to stay uh, stay close to that 10th spot in the West because they're still trying to get in the playoffs. Hopefully so, the win's tonight at home for, for Coach Pop. Say it. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. There you go. Go Spurs, go. Have a great weekend.